In this lab, we will explore the concepts of using Windows event logs for a security investigation. We will use both the graphical interface and the command prompt to demonstrate various methods for identifying and analyzing security related events. First things first, let's hit the start menu and start typing in event to look for the event viewer and then open it up. In the event viewer on the left pane, we can see a few folders with different areas of logs. We can expand Windows logs to see different log categories that make up the core of Windows event logs itself. So let's go and explore those now. First, we have the application logs. And this set of logs records events generated by applications and programs running on the system. It includes information about application crashes, warnings, errors, and other related events. Next, we have the security logs, and these contain events related to the operating system itself and its components. This includes information about driver and service startups, hardware errors, and system crashes. After this, we have the setup log, and this records events related to the installation and configuration of software and hardware components on the system. This log is particularly useful for troubleshooting installation issues. And then after we have the system logs, and these contain events related to the operating system itself and its components, such as information about driver and service startups, hardware errors, and system crashes as well. And then lastly, we have forwarded events log. And this area is used in event forwarding scenarios. It actually allows one computer to collect and store events from other computers on the network. And this is kind of cool because it centralizes event log management onto one machine. Now, all of these log sources are invaluable for investigations, but as you might be thinking or guessing, we're most interested in the security event logs. That's where all the action happens. So let's navigate over there and we can view some events like login events on our Windows machine. And the way that works is if a login event success occurs, we know that a user has successfully logged in. Same for failures, showing a failed login attempt. So let's go and explore some of that now and click on the security log. Then select Filter Current Log in the right-hand pane. Windows event logs use event IDs to categorize different event types. Let's look for event ID 4624, and that indicates log on successful. And if we wanted to add another event ID to filter, we can put a comma, and then maybe we can search for something like 4625, and that indicates log on failure. So let's go and review those types of event IDs now. As you can see, there are a lot of events that have taken place. And in the bottom, we can see a description of more information about these specific events, such as account name, logon type, source network address. These are all really important fields for us to investigate what actually happened and who was responsible or what for these events. And of course, if you wanted to do this independently, you could just search for either one specifically, like removing 4624 like this, and then looking through this list of event IDs. But let's stick back with 4624 for logon successful and go through some of these logon types. In this first one here, we see a logon type of five. And this is a logon type used to describe services or service accounts that are authenticating. It occurs when a service starts and needs to log in. Now we can look at the next one, but also keep in mind your event logs are going to look different than mine because this is a different point in time. Different things have happened in my system compared to yours. So follow along, but also try to trace down events in your event log that are matching up with what I'm finding. So in this case, I'm seeing a log on type of 10 over here, and this is for remote desktop services or terminal services. And this log on type indicates that a user logged on remotely, which as you would guess by the name, this is kind of handy if we're trying to differentiate how did a user or an attacker get onto the system. In this case, an administrator account, as we can see here. We can also discover a source network address of 10.10.0.4. This might very well be us, right? So this helps you indicate who the user was. And then next we have a logon type of 2 over here in this event. And this is an indication of interactive local login. This happens when a user logs on to the local computer using a physical keyboard and monitor. It indicates an interactive session where a user directly interacts with the computer. Now let's take a look at another one down over here. We can see a logon type of three. So this indicates actually a network remote logon. This happens when a user logs on to remote desktop over a network, such as accessing a shared folder or using remote desktop. 
And so there are lots of logon types. We won't cover them all, but something else that you should be aware of is the failure reason. So let's go to a 4625 type of event and filter for that. So if we look through some of these events, like the first one, we can see a failure reason field, like account currently disabled. That's really good information to know. So if we're getting account login failures, and the failure reason is telling us something like bad password being put in over and over and over again, that's the type of information we can find over here. We can correlate an account name with the series of failure reasons like unknown username or bad password. And that helps us figure out where it came from, like the source network address. So those are good event IDs for a quick snapshot of what took place. But there's another one of 4688, and this is for new process creation. In this type of event, we get context of what happened after the logon success or failure. We can see over here that a new process ID was created, and we can see the process name as well. And lastly, we can see the creator process ID, and that's where it originated from. And now we've seen those process IDs before, but they haven't looked like this. And that's because it's in a bit of a different format. What we're seeing here is the hexadecimal value of the PID. And if we were to do a quick conversion over to decimal, that's what we would normally expect to see inside of something like Task Manager. We can demonstrate that. Let's look at another event over here and let's take a look at exactly that value of 0x260. Feel free to do this any way you'd like. I'm just going to use the Windows calculator here with the advanced programmer mode turned on. And if I put in that value of 260 and convert it over to decimal, we see the value of 608. And if we have task manager open in the back, we could go and sort by PID and we're actually gonna find that services.exe of 608, which coincides with what we saw inside of the event message over here of 0x260. And so that's important to remember that these PIDs are specified in hex inside of the Windows Event Viewer by default, and we might need to do a little bit of translation if we're doing some research. Thankfully, software can do that for us, but that's just something to keep in mind. Now let's hop in the command line and open up command prompt, and then we'll do a PowerShell right after to see how we can do this over here. In command prompt, we can use the command of wevutil, so Windows Event Utilities, and then we'll provide it the EL flag option to list all of the log channels. Let's go and run that now and see what it looks like. So that's definitely a lot of action there, and we can see inside of security, setup, and system those event logs that we were looking for inside of Event Viewer. Now, let's clear this because that's a lot of noise. And instead, let's run the command again, but with the QE option, and that allows us to query events. So for example, if we wanted to query security events with ID of 4625, we could write out a pretty long string, and this isn't the easiest to just see right away and be like, oh yeah, I totally would just know that, because it's a little convoluted in terms of what you want to specify, but this is the syntax. So I'll give you a moment here, or you can pause and just type that out yourself. And then once we're ready, we can hit enter. Okay, so there are all those event IDs that we were looking at previously inside of the event viewer. Not as easy to work with on the command line, this definitely needs formatting, but we can still extract it out and pull it out to somewhere else that we want to read them from. Now let's do that in PowerShell, and PowerShell actually makes this a heck of a lot easier. All we need is the get event log commandlet, and then we specify it with the dash log name, and let's say we want to get all of the events inside of the security log channel, we just specify security. And there's our output. And remember what we talked about in PowerShell earlier on is that everything is sort of formatted already for you in the command line. So that's why it's a little bit nicer. Now let's clear this and search for a specific type of event ID. So the same command, except this time we just specify also with the dash instance ID option and specify something like 4625 to get all of those event IDs filtered from the security log itself. And there we go, all of our account logon failed events. That's much easier to work with, right? Okay, so let's hop back in the event viewer and this time we're going to look at two more things. The first one being for us to save an event log and then bring it back in for inspection. And then we'll look at event forwarding. So if we wanted to save and look at the security log, we could just right click it and then go to save all events as, and it will save as a .evtx file. Let's save it as something called security. 
Now you'll get a little pop-up here for display information, and we do want to specify this in a language, so we'll choose English and hit OK. Now we'll close Event Viewer, and let's go and double-click it from the desktop now. And notice how it brings us back in Event Viewer, but under Saved Logs for us to inspect. And this is great for digital forensics. And finally, let's look at Event Forwarding. So if we wanted to do this, we could click on Subscriptions and just say yes, that will start the service when the computer is restarted. And all we need to do here now is right-click that little Subscriptions folder, click on Create Subscription, and this is where we could specify what we would want the forwarding to do. Say we wanted to ship out just a specific set of logs. Well, we could go and do that instead by selecting Events and then going to By Log and clicking on Event Logs go through the drop down area and select what we want. Maybe we want to ship out our security logs to a log server. And we'll be diving inside of Elk very soon over here looking at a more professional level of log analytics, but that's really it for Windows event logs. And so unless you actually have a service like Elk or some other type of software set up, typically this is the first place that you'll look for troubleshooting. And this could be any type of troubleshooting just from failure, random restarts, application hanging up and crashing. This is where you'll go inside of Windows to do some basic investigation. And this is also where you'll look inside of Windows if you're looking for weird logon events happening as well too, if you're suspicious that there might be a compromise.